What's poppin' guys? Sean Don is back with a technical analysis. Here we have Ryan Baldwin, teammate of Quentin Webert, a SDTC elite member. Um, and uh, yeah, so he's hopping on board for a little technical analysis action. Thanks to Quentin for uh, helping him out, passing along the savings. Um, so yeah, two turn throw for Ryan. He has done some three-turn stuff, but uh, primarily sticks with the two-turn from what Quinn told me. And uh, yeah, one more time, just for solidarity, and then we shall get into the breakdown. Okay, so some tightness, some low point shifting, but uh, shout out to the short shorts. Very nice. And some movement. Join the movement. If you wear short shorts for your throws, tag me in your posts, and uh, I'll give you guys a shout out. One day I'm gonna get some short shorts made for everybody, and then we can all join the movement. Um, so yeah, so starting off here, um, like I said, your low point kind of shifts in your turns, and that kind of starts with your winds. So like right here, as you can see, your hands kind of come too far to the left. So like you, when, you, when you're in the winds, you really don't want your hands to cross the midline of your body. So meaning, you know, once again, you just cut your body in half. You really don't want your hands to cross that midline too much. Whereas you can see your hands kind of come quite uh, left of, well, left of your left side. Um, <clears throat> so what you want to do is uh, turn your eyes, turn your face, <laughs> turn your head more towards uh, 270. Try to think, I'd say like a, like a good like uh, 130, 2 o'clock. 2:30 ish, uh, or what would that be? 45 degrees before zero. That would be a good place to turn your head and look at that way. So that way you can turn your shoulders back to the right more. Um, that way you can connect to the hammer earlier in your low point and set up a little bit more uh, in front of your right foot instead of um, in front of your left foot. Uh, which I will explain why that is a bad thing later on. So yeah, like I said, your hands just come a little bit too far left. You gotta turn your shoulders back more, turn your head back more. You can see that's what you do. But if you start with your shoulders already facing a little bit more to the right, it'll make things a little bit smoother, a little bit more seamless. Whereas right now you see there's a lot of movement going on. You see your hips shift back and forth. Your shoulders kind of come forwards a little bit. You can see here uh, your chest comes down as you shift back to this right side. Um, and then as you come through the second wind, also I'd say bend your legs a little bit more. As you can see, you're pretty much standing straight up. So what you want to do is think about like a nice quarter front squat position. So hips underneath you, shoulders over your hips, torso upright. Like I said, front squat, quarter squat, half squat even. I think quarter squat's plenty, but anything is better than just standing straight up because um, it's not very stable and it's easy to get pulled off balance. Um, otherwise, same thing as in the first one. Your shoulders come back to zero, head's at zero, ball's at zero. Uh, try to have your shoulders turn back to the right more. Hands come very left, so even more left here, you can see you shift very much over to this right side. Left leg straightens out, and then you have this awkward um, left elbow comes really high. You want that left elbow to kind of cross across. You want it to cross uh, more across your sternum rather than up over your head. Maybe a little bit in front of your chin, but uh, with this elbow coming too high, once again, that's... Um, going to kind of throw you off balance, especially if your legs are straight, where you can see you're starting to bend them a little bit now, but you're coming very forward as well, up onto your toes. Um, you want to be a little bit more stable. Uh, ball the foot, midfoot, even uh, kind of back on your heels, because that is the direction that you're going to be traveling. Um, so don't let that left elbow come so high either, Ryan. Um, and yeah, you can see, once again, because the left elbow comes high, your shoulders don't turn quite back as far as they need to, so then you don't really connect with the ball. So like, shoulders are turned back, but your head's not. Like, I think you, you can just do more. Turn back to the right more. Um, but it's mostly this ball coming too far left here. The ball comes too far left. Your elbow, your hands come too far left. It's really hard to turn back and catch the ball early. So like, ideally, your hands would be behind your body right now. Your left elbow or right elbow would be a little bit more down towards your uh, your side. And the ball would be a little bit lower, but as you can see, the ball reaches its kind of high point in the winds, like right about here, which means it's going to come back through, and your low point is going to be set up just in front of this left foot, which is no good because if you do that, uh, the only way to create or to keep tension once that low point shifts past your left foot 
is to pull the left side, which is kind of what happens in your throat. So um, relax your hands, relax your arms, turn your shoulders back to the right more, bend your knees, stuff like that. It's all important. Um, but yeah, as you can see, you're once again opening back up to zero a little bit early, leading the ball. Heads at zero, shoulders are kind of at zero, but the ball is back 45 degrees before zero. Um, that's once again a sign that your left side is going to lead as uh, the throw continues. And you can see right here, once again, legs kind of straight, not using much. All right, you got to sink into your legs, feel them working. You can feel your, feel your legs working for the entirety of a throw. It's going to probably be a good throw because if you don't feel your legs working, that means you're going to feel tension in your upper body and you're going to feel your upper body working, not your lower body. And that means you're going to kind of pull and drag and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. This, this left leg straightening out as the ball comes left. Uh, this left leg piking is not a good thing. Um, you can also see your left toes kind of pointed towards the sector already while the ball is still back before two seven, or before 90. Sorry, Your right leg is pointing like 45 degrees uh, after zero. So your lower body isn't quite connected to the ball because this left leg straightens out so aggressively. But that also could be a result of this left shoulder just kind of leading right off the start. Um, so what you need to do is, like I said, this all comes back to the winds. you got to turn back earlier, connect earlier, relax more, and feel this right side, this right arm, this right leg, right hip, right knee, all this right side, working the ball. Uh, I think about kind of throwing the ball forwards and relaxing, and then using this right side to chase the ball out to the left, whereas right now this left side's doing too much, and it pulls back away as the ball goes left. So the right side's playing catch-up. Can't really do much. There's a little bit of tension through the arms. Um, but the big thing is get, keeping this left leg bent, especially Get that left knee, so like this position right here, get this left knee out over this middle of the foot. Keep this hips out over here more. This whole picture, your whole body needs to be kind of shifted by about a foot to the left. If you do that, if you can get that to happen, if you let the ball pass enough, it'll be so much easier and your throw will be much more efficient, whereas right now you're pulling back very much with this left side and that uh, is inefficient. There's really no other way to put it you're missing a lot of force that could be applied to the hammer. Uh, so going back to what I said earlier, this left side is kind of disconnected and leading early. Toes pointed to 180, hammer still at 90, right foot is back at 90. Big separation here between the left side and the right side. Um, the lower body has to work together. Right leg kind of turns into the left leg. Um, they work together, not separate. And then um, because this right leg is kind of behind, you can see some tension in the arms. Your hands lift up a little bit, your left leg extending because, once again, that left leg, the left side is just doing too much. Uh, right hip does kind of chase the ball forwards. So you can see, like, in this catch right here, in these few frames, you actually do a good job of chasing this right hip towards the ball. You do kind of come around this left side. You can see the right hip start to come forwards towards the ball, like right here. These few frames, you see your right hip try to get underneath. Um, but because this left leg is doing too much in the start, you're rising up too much. Um, it takes a while for that right leg to get down. So, like, if you if you bend this left leg more, have this right same same right hip action, you'd be able to get your right foot down probably like about there. But because this left leg extends, that right hip gets under. But then you don't get this right foot down until pretty late. And as you can see, it's very straight. Uh, what you need to think about is this right leg being uh, sort of um, like a like a piston going up and down rather than going around. Like this is not shot disc. Um, you need to be quick up over this left leg and then quick to put it straight down into the ground. So like I said, it's like this ball comes through. Well, it's like, the, like about the right sector line. You want to feel the ball stretch forwards. And then you want to think about literally stepping in the direction of the sector and putting your foot down like right here. If you, like I said, I think you could get your right foot down right here. You'd catch way earlier. You'd be able to feel your right side working way more. And you'd feel much more powerful and efficient. But instead you kind of float a little bit here, extend that right leg pretty much straight and then you catch late you see you over rotate a little bit here and because of that your left side is going to pull more and you can even see that your hips are facing more towards zero while your shoulders are back facing uh, 270 that creates a lot of separation when that happens your right side or sorry your left side is going to continue to pull which as you can see here this ball comes through zero you see this left side really go back same thing left leg is going to open up early right leg is not doing much it's not turning much um, and you just see that left side pull, 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 pull. 
and you can see your low point once again is right about here somewhere in these few frames left side doing all the work left leg opens up you're back against the ball it's just at the wrong time because you catch late lower body once again big separation here left foot pointed towards 180 right foot pointed back towards 45 degrees before zero balls at uh, 90 and yeah just kind of mistimed disconnected with the lower body same sort of thing here right side goes around the left right hip chases the ball forwards but you can see a lot of tension in the arms um, what I usually recommend is toss and sauce tacky from throwbros.com or um, what is it tough skin go to your athletic trainer just for that's for some tough skin or hit up Quentin I'm sure you might have some if he's been using it um, that way you can put it on the back of your glove hand and the inside of your right hand and you can relax your arms and feel the ball better whereas right now you can see there's just a lot of tension in your arms because you're trying to feel the ball because you can't feel the ball with your legs you got to find tension somewhere uh, same thing though left leg straightens out a little bit right hip comes around tension hands lift and then you kind of come wide with this right foot step once again if you just use this nice piston motion think a skip up and down over this left leg and you can probably get your right foot down probably about there but you, you're just so high in this left foot you can see you're barely on your left toe right foot right leg extends you come down and catch just about 270 with a big dramatic separation between the hips and the shoulders uh, rather than being together um, I have to take a sip of my coffee and uh, otherwise yeah you catch and pendulum you see your head shoulders start to go back it's decent but like I said your low points already past zero it's gonna be really hard to get it back before zero I don't even know how to do that to be honest I've seen maybe one other person ever or one person ever not one other person but one person ever take their low point from left foot back to right foot and that involves a lot of pulling and tension and it's not good it's not natural but uh, you can see your pendulum back against the ball is pretty good, but you can see this right leg is still kind of, uh, the right knee is trying to do some stuff, but that right foot is just not uh, really turning. Left leg extends up and out. Kind of the Quentin style finish as well. No offense, Quentin. Um, but yeah. So the big things, like I said, if you change your winds and entry, everything else will get much better. So, Ryan, one quick review. Um, open your shoulders up back more to the right. Try to set the low point up more on this right side. Don't turn your shoulders square to zero in the winds. And then uh, relax your hands a little bit more. Connect earlier. Bend your left leg more. Wait for the ball to pass. Definitely wait for the ball to pass. That's a cue that applies to everybody, myself included. And uh, and then yeah, bend those left, bend the, bend those legs, get into those legs, catch earlier, stuff like that. All this stuff is uh, it's very useful for you. So hopefully that helps out. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, if anybody out there wants a technical analysis, the uh, technical analysis of their own, go to SeanDonnelly.biz, sign up for an in-depth technical analysis, fifteen bucks, make them gains. Championship season is coming around the corner for all you collegiate athletes. Got conference championships coming up the next couple of weeks. And then uh, right after that, it's on to, you know, regionals and national championships and stuff like that. So sign up, make some technical changes, start dropping bombs. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. Sean Don, peace and out.